Hi, this video is about how accurately made the planing form is and how to cut the 60 degree groove in the plane for, for planing the um, split cane. Right, so I'm, first I'll talk to you a little bit some, about some of the tools I own and then we'll move on further to the topic. Right, so I've got workshop grade um, tools, they're more and right. Got a um, precision square, I've got two of these. One of them is Air Ministry from 1941, and the other one, exactly the same, which is new. So, they're very well made. And um, they're very well made. Hope you can see that. The next item I, I used was a more and right depth micrometer. And the reason why I use a depth micrometer is because this, the foot of the micrometer, is probably the flattest and most perfect thing I own. Like that. Another one of the tools I used was this Batty reverse reading dial test indicator with the 60 degree point that I'd made in one of my other videos. You'll see that. And you'll, if you don't know how it works, but the plane in form, when it's flat with no groove or gap in the centre of it, is perfectly flat. Okay, so what I've done is I've opened it, I've parted the um, the form so it had a quarter inch gap all the way along. And that's a uh, what quarter of inch? That would be two hundred and fifty thousandths of an inch wide. And when you put the plane in form in it, because this is a 60 degree and basically like a wedge, I was able to use that to calibrate and adjust the width, even though the sides of the plane at the time didn't have a groove and they were just perfectly straight. All right, moving on from that. Well, Oh, and I've also used a um, set of feeler gauges from one and a half thousandths, which is um, 0 0.0015 to two thousandths of an inch, which is 0 0.0020. Alright. I had to make... Um, a, a, a plane like a woodworking plane but a metalwork one it's really quite simple I um, I bought this tungsten carbide um, roughing tool or uh, thread cutting tool from the internet but it wasn't perfect it wasn't 60 degrees so I had to regrind that to a 60 degree point to cut the groove I made this um, kind of not also precision but it's got some precision engineering in it form sorry plane to hold the bit there and you can tighten up on the front and adjust it by slightly tapping the back end and you'll be surprised how how well it has worked so the blade pokes out and I also made some guides to keep it in a straight line so they're in line and though I found it a lot easier to use it without the guides right so I'll show you how that works in a minute moving on to the actual accuracy bit of the plane Right. Here's a precision square and a feeler gauge. 
of one and a half thousandths. So what I'd done all the way along the plane is I'd put that on it a square and uh, one and a half thousandths doesn't go under it at all. So there are very few voids and it's filed to um, some tolerances. Now, about it being kind of parallel, what I've done with the camera is I had put my depth micrometer across the beams, so we say across the beams, and I've got the feeler gauge and one and a half thousands will not go under it. But there are just two small areas on a particular part of the plane where it will, where it will go under it. So in, in two areas, only the size of um, like an old half pence on the edge of the plane where it really doesn't matter much in my opinion. One and a half thousandths will go under it, but not the two thousandths of an inch. So the plane in form is made with an accuracy of two thousandths of an inch, or if I really want to be super accurate, uh, point zero, uh, zero point zero zero one five, one and a half thousandths of an inch, that's how accurate it is. Let's pop that back in there. Now, in cutting the groove, I'd used my dull test indicator like this with the base that I'd made and I once zeroed like that I'm able to let's move the camera a little bit it's zeroed on the flat you're thinking well yes that's fine it's zeroed there and there and it's zero so I'd use this to cut the groove like so once that's in there, cut the groove like so, the 60 degree groove. And I'd use this to measure the progress and depth of it. Right, so, Patsy Quotes for um, experiment. Here's, a, here's something for you. From, from flat to flat, and in doing that there, once the dull test indicator slides across the flat and into the 60 degree groove that I've cut I now get a reading of 29 thousandths of an inch deep at that station here's another one I've really got to make a better base for it right so that's zero and if I move it forwards there I get 29 thousandths of an inch depth now it's pretty much like that all the way along the uh, playing form but there's still some work to be done because at one at the very far at the butt end of it I've got a reading of 32 thousandths and that's fine because that's the thicker end anyway but what, I, what I'm going to aim for is a total depth of about 30 to 35 along the entire length and I, some of the other readings are 28 thousandths of an inch so, things to be done, I just need to, see that one there is 30, I just need to do a little bit more work to it. And the next one, 29, um, where the, um, the pin is, 30, so it's come along quite well in my opinion. Um, also to help me with the groove I've got a uh, triangle honing stone and I'd run that along the gap as well to smooth it out. One of the other things that I, I feel I have to do is now uh, make another plane and glue 
a sectional triangle file to it and then use that to file gently file these uh, the 60 degree groove in some places to bring it to a specification of of say 35 thousandths of an inch and uh, it's coming along really quite well with an indelible marker I'm going to mark each station with a line including the dowel pins so each of my black lines is precisely two and a half inches apart it's probably a better way to do it but this is just an idea I had Using my dial test indicator with the zero there and putting it to the um, the bolt and the marker. If I slide it into the groove, you can see I get thirty one thousandths. So what I'll do, oops, is I'll write down. 31. Then on the next station, which is a uh, one of the, the pins, I'll slide that in position and I get 25, 26, 27 and a half. So we'll call it 27 because it'll, it will work to a thousandths, not one and a half foul my tolerance for, for making the cane rod will be one thousandths of an inch. Right, the next one is twenty-seven thousandths. Hold on. You can see why I've got to make a I'll make a bad standard. Twenty nine. That one is twenty four, twenty six, twenty seven, nearly twenty eight. So we'll call that one twenty seven. It's actually twenty seven and a half, but we're not dealing with halves. Is 25 26. This one is also 27. Now, the last one is 
because it isn't perfectly cut on the end, it's about the same here. Oh look, 25, 26, 27. It's 28 directly there, but there it's lower. So it obviously needs a bit more work on the groove, but it's getting them with care and taking my time. Be able to do it so you can see there the numbers oops so you can see there the numbers that I'm getting at the moment I'm gonna aim for about thirty thousandths of an inch the entire length of the plane because I'll, I'll be I'll be making rods to um, they'll be kind of straight tapers not compounded where the the thickness varies along its length and uh, what I I read and uh, while doing some research is it to work out just fine if the tolerances are, tolerances are kept within two thousandths of an inch like with the filing it flat and, and the um, cutting the groove etc. So 2,000 of an inch is uh, acceptable. It's getting there quite well in my opinion. So I'll take my time with it like I have been but it won't be long now before um, I'll move on to the next stage of uh, splitting some cane and then planing a rod down. There, there'll probably be um, an update video on the planing form once it's completed. As I have no actual way of telling <laughs> um, how it's going to turn out, but it's looking quite good in my opinion. Thanks for your time and thanks for looking.